My dear Wormwood, I have been thinking very hard about the question in your last letter. If, as I have clearly shown, all selves are being their very nat are are by their very nature in comp competition and therefore the enemy's idea of love is a contradiction in terms what becomes of my re reiterated warning that ha that he really loves the human vermin and really desires their freedom and continued existence i hope my dear boy you have not shown my letter to anyone not that it matters of course anyone would see that the appearance of heresy into which i have fallen is purely accidental by the way i hope you understand too that some apparently uncomplimentary references to slop gob were purely uh, jocular jocular i really have the highest respect for him and of course some things i said about not shielding you from the authorities were not seriously meant you can trust me to look after your interests but do keep everything on under lock and key the truth is i slip by mere carelessness into saying that the enemy really loves the humans that of course is an impossibility he is one being they are distinct from him their good cannot be his all his talk about love must be a disguise for something else he must have some real motive for creating them and take taking so much trouble about him talk, taking so much trouble about them the reason one comes to talk as if he really had this impossible love is our utter failure to find out the real motive what does he stand to make out of them that is the insoluble question i do not see that that it can do any harm to tell you that this very problem was a chief cause of our father's quarrel with the enemy when the creation of man was first mooted and when even at that stage the enemy freely confessed that he foresaw a certain episode about a cross our father very naturally sought an interview and asked for an explanation the enemy gave no reply except to produce the cock and bull story about disinterested love which he had been circulating ever since this our father naturally cannot accept his impl he implored the enemy to lay his cards on the table and gave him every opportunity he admitted that he felt a real anxiety to know the secret the enemy replied quote i wish with all my heart that you did end quote it was i imagine at this stage in the interview that our father's disgust at such an unprovoked lack of confidence caused him to remove himself in infinite distance from the presence with a suddenness which has given rise to the ridiculous enemy story that he was forcibly thrown out of heaven since then we have begun to see why our oppressor was so secretive his throne depends on the secret members of his faction have frequently admitted that it that if ever we came to understand what he means by love the war would be over and we would re-enter heaven and there lies the great task we know that he cannot really love nobody can it doesn't make sense if we could only find out what he is really up to hypothesis after hypothesis has been tried and still we couldn't find out yet we must never lose hope more and more complicated theories further and further collections of data richer rewards for researchers who make progress more and more terrible punishments for those who fail all this pursued 
and accelerated to the very end of time cannot surely fail to succeed. You complain that my last letter does not make it clear whether I regard being in love as a desirable state for a human or not. But really, Wormwood, that is the sort of question one expects them to ask. Leave them to discuss whether love or patriotism or celibacy, celibacy or candles on altars or titolism or education are good or bad. Can't you see there is no answer? Nothing matters at all except the tendency of a given state of mind in given circumstances to move in a particular patient as a particular moment nearer to the enemy or nearer to us. Thus, it would be quite a good thing to make the patient decide that, quote, love is good or bad. If he is an arrogant man with a contempt for the body really based on decency, but mistaken by him for purity, and one who takes pleasure in flouting what may most of his followers approve, by all means, let him decide against love. Instill into him an overviewing, overweening uh, eclectism, and then, when you have separated his sexua sexuality from all that might humanize it, weigh in on him with it in some much more brutal and cynical form. If, on the other hand, he is an emotional, gullible man, feed him on minor poets and fifth-rate fifth novelists and the old school until you have made him believe that love is both irres irresistible and somehow intrinsically um, mer meritorious. This belief is not much help, I grant you, in producing casual unchastity, but it is in um, incomparable recipe for prolonged, noble, romantic, tragic adulteries, ending, if all goes well, in murders and suicides. Failing that, it can be used to steer the patient into a useful marriage, for marriage, though the enemy's invention, has its uses. There must be several young women in your patient's neighborhood who would r render the Christian life intensely difficult to him if only one would pursue, persuade him to marry one of them. Please send me a report on this when you next write. In the meantime, get it quite clear in your own mind that this state of falling in love is not in itself necessary necessarily favorable either to use or or to the other side or either either to us or to the other side it is simply an occasion which we and the enemy are both trying to exploit like most of the other things which humans are excited about, such as health and sickness, age and youth, or war and peace, it is, from the point of view of the spiritual life, mainly raw material. Your affectionate uncle, Screwtape.